Albertans could soon see a change in prices at the pumps. The province will stop collecting tax on gas and give families an energy rebate. This massive tax relief is a response to skyrocketing costs at the pump and is going to provide Albertans with the relief that they need when the cost of everything is going up. Here's a look at the wild ride oil has been on in just the last two years. In March of 2020, the pandemic hit, the global economy shut down, and the price of West Texas Intermediate tanked to about $20 a barrel. Now, with economies revving back up and a war raging in Ukraine, the price is six times that at nearly $120 a barrel. Travis Taves is Alberta's finance minister. He's with us, with us rather, from Edmonton. Hi, Minister. Good to see you again. Thanks for making the time. Oh, my pleasure, Bashi. Uh, let me ask you, I should have specified in the introduction there, it's the provincial tax that, that you're rebating consumers, which amounts to uh, about 13.6 cents, I think, a liter. Uh, you're, in making the announcement today, I listened to both you and the Premier say that you also wanted, you're imploring the federal government to freeze its increase, on, upcoming increase on the carbon tax. But your rebate that you've just announced more than covers what that amount would be. So, so what would be the point of the federal government doing that? Well, well, the point of the federal government um, not raising their carbon tax here the 1st of April would be to provide Canadians with uh, with an affordability measure at a time they, they really need one. I mean, we're seeing energy prices rise so significantly, it's putting pressure on households, on small businesses, and additional carbon tax burden is, is unacceptable at this point. So the additional burden from, from what I've read is, is going from about 8.8 .8 cents a litre to 11 cents a litre. Your re rebate, again, as I said, is almost 14 cents a litre. Plus, the federal government does, at the end of the day, rebate that, the, the, the federal carbon tax. So, so I, again, I'm not really sure how, how the math adds up there. What difference would it really make? And I do, I'm, not, I'm not pushing back against the idea that consumers would like to see a lower price at the pump. I just don't know if it's politics that you're going for here or a, actual change, that, a difference that it would make. Well, well, you know, the, the carbon tax rebate is not rebated directly to those who pay the tax. It, it's effectively a, a form of wealth redistribution. And so, I mean, our view is this. We want to provide uh, some uh, relief, cost relief to Albertans. We want to, that's why we brought in these affordability measures. And, and effectively, in terms of reducing the tax at the pump, that will uh, directly affect those Albertans that, that, are, that have to go out, fill their vehicles up to drive to work, uh, take their, their kids to hockey practice uh, for seniors that, that have to go to town to buy groceries. Whereas the, the federal government uh, rebate program isn't necessarily targeted to, to those Canadians uh, that actually pay the tax in, in the volumes that they pay it. So again, we, we would call on the federal government to not move forward on April 1st with an increase in the carbon tax. Just really quickly, I mean, I, I, uh, as far as who gets the rebate, I mean, it's anyone who pays their taxes, basically, and who, who checks off a certain box, right? Like people, all Canadians are eligible for it. I think the point you're making is around businesses, for example, who shoulder a bit more of that burden and don't have access to the same level of rebates. But most, it's, it's not as though they're hand-selecting uh, specific Canadians. I, I do want to move on, though, and ask about another point that I heard you and, and the Premier make today, and that is around this discussion we were just having, for example, with Ambassador Bolton about the possibility of the U.S. and EU banning uh, imports of oil from Russia. Uh, your government has made the point that, you know, should, should pipelines have been built, uh, Alberta could be supplanting a lot of that supply. And, and I just wanted to uh, push back a little bit on that because the timeline is a bit fuzzy. I, I understand your, your government's desire to see Keystone built. It would still be many years out, right? And even capacity production is pretty close to capacity right now. So is what you're pushing for actually realistic? Well, well, it is. I mean, granted, we can't increase capacity and build a pipeline within a couple of months. That's that's very true. But had President Biden not revoked uh, the Keystone permit, we would be looking at additional uh, 800,000 plus barrel capacity every day, late 2022 uh, or 2023. That's still, though, a little ways off, right? It's it's not immediate. And it would have also meant that everything went along schedule with production, which so far it had not, or with construction rather, which, which in many pipeline instances we've seen is not the case. Well, well, that's that's true, Vashi. But but when we take a look at um, the risks uh, when when we don't have energy independence, when we take a look at the unintended consequences of, I would suggest, hasty divestment, and and failed policies around energy in North America, it's it's really putting 
uh, many folks around around the globe in a precarious situation. I mean, we can already we can look at last fall when we uh, really observed natural gas prices running up, you know, in, in Europe and Asia and, and all of the unintended consequences, you know, gas fired electricity going back, converting back to coal. We had we have fertilizer plant shut down, which is going to drive the cost of uh, agriculture inputs, reducing agriculture production globally. We have, you know, the, the most vulnerable affected the most directly by the unintended consequences of hasty energy divestment, as well as failed uh, energy policies. At some point in time, we have to turn the page and get back to more rational thought. So, so let me ask you then, fr from your perspective, why does it, and, and tell me how you feel about this, but, but I understand the argument that you're making, that this is a moment in time in which people should be reevaluating their energy policy, could be leaning perhaps more on a country like Canada, which doesn't, you know, isn't a bad actor in, in the world. But when I listen to world leaders address that very question, and they're getting it day in and day out, they aren't saying, you know what we should have done is build more pipelines. You know what we should have done is rely more heavily on Canada. They're saying this underscores the point that we should not be relying on fossil fuels so much. This underscores the point that we should be transitioning away from that. I heard a conservative in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, say that just this morning. Why is the argument you're making failing to resonate with the rest of the world? Well, well, firstly, Boris Johnson has gone on record saying that North, the North American energy industry should get a, a climate change pass for a period of time so that we can uh, in, so that we can insist uh, or assist Europe in, in their energy security. I mean, ultimately, Europe's been on a path towards renewables. I would suggest that part of the challenge they're facing today is, in fact, due to hasty traditional energy divestment and uh, a hasty move to renewables before the technology and infrastructure was in place to support. But yet they're still saying right now that the point that 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 what they're struck by is that they should be moving away from the very thing that you're pitching. Is it is it is it futile to continue? And I get why you'd want to, given the resources Alberta has. But is it futile to continue pitching that argument when it just seems like the rest of the world is moving in a different direction? Look, Fashi, we, we've been uh, we, we've been suggesting that Alberta, and not only Alberta but Canada, has a very significant role globally in in responsible, ethically produced energy. And right now, we're we're pointing to the tragedy that's unfolding in Europe, and and we're saying here here here's what we've been suggesting for a long time. We need to focus on energy security. Yes, an energy transition is occurring. And I would suggest in Canada, we can lead that energy transition. In the meantime, demand for oil and gas will be here for decades to come. We need to do all we can to ensure that ethically produced, uh, environmentally responsibly produced energy here in Canada uh, positions North America for energy security and in fact assists our geopolitical allies around the world. Respectfully, though, it doesn't answer the question of why that argument isn't resonating. You continue to make it. Your government continues to make it. But it's like I said, it's not like anyone today was saying, hey, you know what? I just heard that argument. And I, I think we need to be doing more of that. Well, I would disagree, Vashi. I mean, uh, we, we've heard from uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson talk about the importance of North American energy. Certainly our sources uh, would indicate that uh, the, the, the German government, the, the new chancellor, is looking to North America. To, uh, to to create another uh, form of energy, a su energy supply chain for that nation. So, no, I'm, I'm actually hearing that uh, global leaders, uh, leaders in the Western world and Western democracies are taking a look at energy security, the importance of it, and, and beginning to talk about solid, dependable North American supply. Okay, Minister Taves, I'm out of time, but I appreciate yours. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Travis Taves is Alberta's Minister of Finance. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.